Hello, Nithyanandam YouTube. I have been getting a lot of reading done. I am so happy about that. And so I wanted to tell you about some of the books I've been reading. The first of which is a book called American Veda by Philip Goldberg. I picked this one up at my library and I picked it up and at first I was a little skeptical because in general I am skeptical about Western people writing about Hinduism and India because there's so much of the colonial imperial influence. But I picked it up and I read, you know, the, the inside flaps and I thought, you know, I'll give it a chance. It is a book about the history of Hinduism, specifically yoga and Vedanta in the United States. <laughs> And so I start reading this book and I was actually really impressed, okay? This guy did a really, really good job. He did a lot of research starting with like Emerson and these early 19th century writers and poets, Walt Whitman, who were reading kind of the first translations of the Upanishads that were available in English and how influential these very early English translations of the Upanishads were for writers such as Emerson and Whitman. And going through that time up into late 19th century, early 20th century with Swami Vivekananda, Paramahamsa Yogananda, getting into all the various yogis and swamis that were coming to the U.S. and teaching in the U.S., the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and various people like that. And also even ones like Ramana Maharishi who did not come to the West but who was very popular with Western seekers and going all the way up into, you know, at the time the book was published, which was I think like 10 years ago. And so I was really, really happy with this book. I was really happy with this book, mostly because it gave me a better sense of context. Me as, as a Western Hindu, as a white girl from America practicing Hinduism, it gave me a much, much better context of the influence of Hinduism in the West and the history of Westerners practicing Hinduism in the form of yoga, Vedanta, philosophy primarily. That it wasn't until the ISKCON movement that there was really any sort of bhakti or temple practices that were really kind of introduced to Western people. And so it was really, really helpful for me to learn more about the context of my presence, my place in this religion, my place in this tradition, my place in this history. The other day I was talking with an Indian person, a guy from India who's here for work, and he started asking me like, are you a second generation Hindu? He specifically asked that, am I a second generation Hindu? Because he knew that so many people that were involved with yoga, meditation, Hinduism in the 60s and 70s raised their children to be Hindu as well. And so we get people like Tulsi Gabbard, who is a democratic presidential hopeful candidate, I don't know, I, I don't follow politics, where her mother began to follow a Hindu guru and raised her in the tradition and she also chose to follow that tradition. And so he was wondering, am I like her? Am I a second generation Western Hindu? And I'm like, no, actually I found this on my own in 2012 and blah, blah, blah. It was really, really interesting to me to have that conversation with him and to read this book and have a better sense of the context of what I am doing and my place in the history of Hinduism in the West. 
It also got me interested in reading some of these other texts and gurus and swamis and different things, different people that were influenced. I downloaded a bunch of music and saw some movies by various people that were influenced. There's a particular George Harrison album that I downloaded and I'm like, wow, this, this is clearly like, this, this dude's a Hindu. And the same thing with Madonna, her Ray of Light album. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm seeking out these things not because I'm seeking and looking for answers, but more because I want to understand the context. And that is a major shift that I only realized happened in my life when I started reading this book, that so often we're used to people that when they go and read a bunch of different things and seek out a bunch of different gurus and go to different classes and workshops and practice, you know, people that try a lot of stuff, that they're trying a lot of things because they're looking for answers to their questions they are seeking. I have reached a point where I am no longer seeking answers to my questions. If I have questions, I go to my guru. He has the answers that I want to hear. He has the answers that work for me. I'm not seeking like that anymore. That now, when I'm studying these things, my seeking is about finding my context, finding my place in this world of Western Hinduism. That was really, that was really profound for me to realize that, to realize that my seeking has shifted that I still have a lot of questions. There are still a lot of things I want to know and learn and study, but I know where to go for the answers. I'm not looking for places to find the answers. I know where to get my answers. I just have to learn the questions to ask. I was really, really surprised by this book. I really highly recommend it for Western Hindus living in the US. I don't know how relevant it is if you're in Europe or Canada or somewhere else. I really have no idea because it really focuses very specifically on the various yoga, Vedanta, Swami gurus and teachers that came to the US. So if you live outside the US, I don't know how relevant it is to you, but it's a very cool book. And I am adding my Goodreads page profile to my social media list. So if you are also into books, you can follow what books I'm reading and as I read them and various things. I'm, I'm getting a lot of reading done and I have some, I don't know, maybe some eclectic, maybe some interesting tastes when it comes to books and reading. Maybe you're interested, maybe you're not, I don't know. But it's another way to connect if you're interested in what I'm doing. So, okay, Nithinandam.